Hello, I'm uh, Kristen Gilger. I'm director of the National Center on Disability and Journalism, which is at uh, the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm also a professor of journalism uh, at the school. And uh, my guest today is Armgada. And she, I'm going to let her introduce herself and say her full name, since I probably won't get it correctly. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Ermgarda Kassenskaja Budeberg. I'm originally from Lithuania, and I'm advisor for communication information at UNESCO. And I'm working on media development, pluralism, and diversity issues. For many years, I've been promoting the rights of persons with disabilities. I'm very happy to be here today and uh, have this short discussion with Kristen. Good. It'll actually be our second discussion since we had a nice one yesterday and, and earlier on Zoom. So I do have a couple questions I want to ask you to get things started. So our topic today is the media and how well or not so well uh, the media organizations around the world portray people with disabilities. And your work at UNESCO has covered a really interesting range of issues from indigenous languages to HIV education and more recently disability. Um, but the common denominator seems to be uh, the right to information and knowledge for all groups in society. So I wanted to start by asking you why that's important to you personally and to the work you do at UNESCO. This is a very important question. First of all, I believe in uh, human potential. Every single human being has a potential destiny, ideas, views, experience, which should be shared with the world, including persons with disabilities. And very often, these are the family members community members who recognize that potential first, and we are those who take measures to create an enabling environment for the children with disabilities, their parents, their relatives, or friends to realize that potential. And this is why organizations like UNESCO, we are one of the special agencies um, of United Nations, which is responsible for constructing a peace in man's and women's mind through education science, culture, communication, and information, we believe that every human being has potential. We believe in human rights, that every human being has the rights and fundamental freedoms to access education, to express freely its own views, and contribute to the societal development. So this is why we work on issues um, related to uh, promotion of uh, disability rights, and we encourage institutions like media institutions to fully cover aspects related to disability issues in society. Let's talk more about media. So why is it so important how the media uh, portray and cover people with disabilities? First of all, I would probably come back a little bit um, to the recent history. In 2006, the World Community and United Nations General Assembly adopted the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. And since few decades now, we could see a tremendous progress made in the promotion of persons with disabilities' rights. And probably I would add here, before we go to the importance of media institutions, I would say what UN Convention provides um, a tremendous framework for different activities around the world. And as a normative instrument is a binding instrument for member states, so it sets certain legal framework for member states, public, private institutions, including media institutions, to be responsible, to be accountable, and as well very proactive. So this is why we could see that media has um, tremendous power in society, as it is able to form different perceptions, observations, even shape the behavior of human beings. And that, of course, includes persons with disabilities. And um, sadly enough, we see what, uh, despite the fact that there is a progress, uh, still there is a lot of work to be done. And we really would like to see what media takes this as an important area of their work. Tell us a little more about the work that you still think needs to be done. I would say, um, coming back to the same um, convention, uh, that's one of the fastest ever ratified UN conventions. 
from 193 member states, we could see today we have 186 member states we've ratified. And there are special provisions as well for media institutions, how to cover, how to report, and actually encouraging um, media institutions to do more work in this area. And the principles of inclusion, participation, equity, were equally equitable as well for media institutions. And that relates to how persons with disabilities are covered, um, what are the issues presented to the society, how, what are the frames are used, and what are the um, inspirations, what are the ideas coming out of that in terms of um, society's reaction, uh, understanding what are the issues and what can be done. So there is a lot of work to be done, and here I would say as well, First of all, the lack of public awareness, it still needs to be increased because even if we speak about tremendous progress, sometimes um, simple things like public awareness, what principles of inclusion matters, principles of diversity, equity for everyone, including persons with disabilities, and that's equally important for media professionals. But if we cover whatever subject, we as well have to make sure what the views of persons with disabilities are presented. And they are presented in the right way, but we do not stigmatize or increase certain stereotypes, but in opposite show the reality in, in which people with disabilities live. Yeah, so more coverage and, and, and better coverage, basically, in terms of framing and language and those are the kinds of things that you're talking about. You know, when we talk about people with disabilities, we often talk about them as if it's a homogenous group, like they're all the same. What do you think are the range of the range of differences within the disability community that it's important for the media to recognize? This is a very pertinent question. I would say we still see what persons with disabilities are presented to seen as a homogeneous group. Mm -hmm. And this is probably one of the first steps towards that greater awareness about persons with disabilities because persons with disabilities, we have differences. We live in different geographical areas. Um, there are differences in gender, ethnicity, social cultural background, even not speaking about languages, what we use or sign. Mm -hmm. And what do we live? What are the habits, aspirations, and ideas we have? So this is why it is important that when we cover and promote um, disability inclusion in media, we take a full diversity of social cultural aspects and we present uh, persons with disabilities from a wise diversity of issues. But we zoom in what we really go to the uh, core of the issues, what matters for persons with disabilities. And obviously this is a part of um, professional standards, ethical standards, and um, we need to build capacities of uh, media institutions, media professionals working together, raising awareness, but at the same time um, making sure that media coverage, media reporting, starting from programming to production, uh, to um, dissemination of media content is in conformity with um, international normative instruments. Um, and that's probably important as well to make sure that um, capacity building comes together with um, development of digital skills. Uh, we could see it more and more that digital technology is used for content production and dissemination. And that content, media content, has to be produced and disseminated, taking into account media and, and um, uh, web accessibility standards. Yeah, which is a, a wide range. Um, so at the NCDJ, we do a lot of training of journalists um, around the world on coverage of disabilities. And one of the things we talk a lot about is including the voices of people with disabilities in stories. So we still see stories that you know might be about a disability or about a person with disability but you know, they the journalist has talked to you know a family member or a caregiver or a teacher or not the person with the disability is that something that you have noticed and do you think how how do we go about changing that that's right uh, we still could see what um, persons with disabilities are considered as um, i would call it news items um, that means people who describe situation. 
whatever it would be, cultural event, activity, sport event, anything. And um, that's what is done by media institutions or media professionals. But at the same time, what we would like to encourage, what um, we would take persons with disabilities as well as those who um, could be considered a source of information. Yeah. Those whose views are worth exploring, integrating in these stories, uh, analysis, um, uh, reports, uh, reportings on, um, on different aspects, and not just being uh, news items. So we are important source of inspiration. Those rights to express their views should be taken into account. We are rights holders in society. Mm -hmm. And this is why sometimes it is not an easy to make that extra step to identify where people with disabilities live. Sometimes we could see it clearly what um, media professionals, or in general everybody who may be not very familiar or do not have in the immediate milieu people with disabilities don't know how to communicate, what terms to use. Um, can I shake the hand? Um, can I say this and that? Can I ask that question? How would and you like to be identified? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many questions and, and issues which probably comes immediately when you, when you meet person with disabilities. And I would say simply, don't afraid. Ask. It's better to be to ask and and communicate rather than to ignore and exclude someone from yeah. from society. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Um, I do want to ask you, you've talked about disability inclusive management practices. When it comes to the media, what do you mean by that? That's right. If we want to see inclusive society, participatory and um, empowering every single human being, we believe as well, but we should not forget what um, media professionals could have as well or live with disabilities. And um, people with disabilities as well could be employed by media institutions. So therefore, we encourage what um, policy and decision makers in media institutions, organizations, whether it would be radio station, television, or online platform, but we would design more disability-inclusive uh, human resources policies. Um, Why do you think it's so important? If we speak about inclusive societies, that means what we want as well to see around us, um, media professionals with disabilities, we are those probably co who could give as well additional voice and sensitivity yeah. to our stories. Yeah. Maybe those who would be able as well um, to indicate what maybe certain media content could be more accessible or certain features should be taken into account. Um, the same as um, we should not forget that um, during our lifetime we may acquire disability and many media professionals we work as well in vulnerable situations and mm. we work in conditions um, have to be adjusted. Um, the same as recruiting persons with disabilities as well. Certain accommodations have to be made and um, including f management processes but as well as introducing maybe assistive technologies, um, reviewing certain processes in organization, how, for instance, we share, document mm -hmm. our stories, documents, what are the uh, physical accessibility um, requirements, and many other aspects which come together with making media institutions, the same as all the other institutions, accessible and inclusive for persons with disabilities. Yeah, and we talk about reasonable accommodations a lot, but I don't know that we always agree on what that means. Um, so if you're a person with a disability, you're applying to a news organization, or you work within a news organization, um, how would you counsel them on having that conversation? It's probably part of the um, wider discussions in organization, how the inclusion practices are taken into account. And, and I would say the first thing is a decision at management board whether diversity inclusion is a principle and a value for us. And if it is, it probably should be for every organization. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, adjustments have to be made from strategic level to operational level. And obviously, every single human being has differences, special needs, uh, requirements, ideas, views. And that's probably what it's needed if, if someone has a disability or it's recently recruited. Um, there is a need for for discussion. So have the conversation. Have a conversation, exactly mm -hmm. what media professionals do all the time. Yes, we ask should be good questions, at that. Ask the right questions, maybe yes. even questions which are, could be difficult to answer yeah. or maybe to 
which would lead to discussions which would require an immediate follow-up. And obviously, um, we have to make sure, I would say even from the beginning, when we recruit people with disabilities, mm -hmm. our recruitment processes have as well to be inclusive, not discriminatory, but in participatory. Mm -hmm. So this is a whole, I would say, way we function in media institutions, what we take into account diversity, what we believe in, in inclusion and participation. And we make sure that among media professionals where I have those who yeah. um, live disabilities. Very good. Well, it's a pleasure speaking with you about this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen.